Today, we're gonna to talk about the histogram, the foundation to getting a good exposure in landscape photography. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is, what should my settings be when I'm out photographing something? And it doesn't matter if we're out photographing waterfalls, if we're out photographing in the woodlands or streams or creeks or anything like that. A lot of people wonder, what should my settings be? Well, we can talk about shutter speed and we can talk about aperture and we can talk about ISO, but unless you know where you're aiming for with those settings, you don't know what to set them to. Like, what's your goal? I can tell you to change your shutter speed and I can give you some tips on, you know, it's going to speed capture motion or blur motion. You know, aperture is going to affect your depth of field, how much light gets in the camera and things like that. And ISO, you know, help change performance within low light conditions. But unless you know what your goal is, where, like, what are your, what's your target? Um, knowing how to change all those doesn't really do a whole lot of good. So before we dive into shutter speed and aperture and ISO and future videos, I wanted to talk about the histogram because that's the base to really learn how to set your exposure for landscape photography. It's a valuable tool um, that if you know how the histogram works, that helps give you something to look at as you're making those changes to shutter speed, aperture, ISO, so you know what impact, what effect you're having. Yes, there's some things about motion that you need to consider and there's things about depth of field, but in keeping the conversation focused on exposure, the histogram is a tool that's well worth learning. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So what is the histogram? The histogram shows you the tonal values of your image. So you see the lights, the darks, and it graphs it all out on a bar chart, essentially, a very many, many bar chart from zero to 255, zero being the darkest, the blacks, 255 being the, the brights, the whites. Um, the thing to remember is histogram, the left side is the darker tones, right side is the brighter tones and it just plots everything it sees in the viewfinder into the the graph across that from ranges of zero to 255 your blacks will be at zero your highlights will be at 255. and that's very important because your camera settings can affect that histogram and move things to the brighter side or to the darker side so by watching that histogram you can see how things are currently seen, being seen in your camera real time if you're clipping your highlights, I expose uh, over blowing your highlights, making it too bright where everything's going white. You want detail in your image. So if you turn it white, there's not detail there. So you can watch for that. And if you go all the way to the right side of the histogram and start get hit bumping into that 255 too much, um, you're blowing those highlights. You won't have detail you can recover from there all the time. And likewise, if you're too far to the left, you're losing your shadows. Your shadows are turning black. And when it's black, there's no detail in there. You can't see any of the texture of that bark underneath the tree. Um, so you want to avoid those extremes and the histogram can help you make sure you're getting the dynamic range of your scene within the limits of your camera. The more light the camera can capture, the more detail there is in the scene. To the limit of if you're blowing your highlights out, it's white and it's lost the detail. And in a, so in a histogram, you sort of want to expose it towards the right side of the histogram without blowing out your highlights. What that does is lets you get more detail. And where that's really important is think about the shadows. As you bring things over to the right, you get more light into the shadows, which gives you more detail. And then when you get at home and post-process your image, you can bring things down a bit, but you're making, you're, you're not losing, you're not trying to bring something up that's too dark where there's not detail there. You're taking something that has lots of detail and darkening it down. So your images overall will have a little more detail to it. And that's where the histogram come important. You can figure out how far to the right can I go to get as much detail in my image as possible. So when I go home and work on it post-processing, I have data to work with to push those shadows, to bring highlights down, to, to do whatever I need to do to get the image of what I saw. So that's sort of how the histogram works. Typically, you're going to want to expose over towards the right, get a little more detail. So now you know a little bit about how the histogram works, but how do you actually use it? We know we can shift it right, left, but what am I looking for? What's the perfect histogram? So what you want to do is what I do is I look at the scene. And I, I get a feel for it with my own eye is what are the tonal values of the image? Uh, in an overcast day, there, it's, there's not going to be a lot of brights and darks. It's all going to be fairly even. So a histogram for that would look fairly even. If you've got some dark shadows and sky, well, you're going to have some bright highlights and you're going to have some darks. So your histogram, depending on which there's more of, is going to be biased to one side or the other. With some of these example shots today, you're going to see I have a lot of shadows in the foreground and a lot of brightness in the back. So my histogram at the end of the day was not this centered 
histogram that sometimes people say is the correct histogram. In reality, the correct histogram is what matches the scene you're seeing with your, your, your normal eye before you even get the camera out. So to use the histogram effectively, that's important. Look at the scene and judge it. Do I have a lot of brights? Do I have a lot of darks? Is it fairly even? And that's gonna help dictate how you adjust your camera settings to get the histogram you want. Okay, so now that you know, take a look at the scene, judge it yourself what the tonal values you think you're seeing are, and now take a look at the back of the camera with your histogram enabled. Check your owner's manual to see how to get that enabled in live view. And with it enabled, as you change settings on your camera, your shutter speed, your aperture, and your ISO, you're going to influence that histogram. You're going to be able to move it to the right, be able to move it to the left. You're going to be able to see, do you have it too far to the left and you're losing all the detail in the shadows? You're going to see if you're too far to the right and blowing all your highlights. So with those tools, now you sort of have a baseline, something to watch, something to view that's pretty darn accurate to figure out what camera settings you want to change. Slowing shutter speeds down will bring the, the histogram to the right, bring it up. Changing your aperture will either darken the image or it'll lighten the image and changing your ISO will also impact it. So the goal then is now that you put it all together, look at the scene, get your tonal values, look at the back of the camera, where's the hist where should the histogram be to get that? So with that said, you know, I mentioned, is there a perfect histogram? And there's not. There's, there's not, I can't tell you, always get your histogram looking like this and it'll be perfectly exposed because it depends on the scene, which is why you wanna look at it with your eyes first and make a decision about what are, the, what are the tones, what is the dynamic range of this image I'm seeing? And that helps you tell because sometimes, like a snowy day, those highlights, you're gonna be really far on the right-hand side, you don't wanna blow them out, but you're gonna have a lot of data over on that right-hand side because most of the image is bright. So your histogram is gonna go up on the right-hand side quite a bit. Same, if you're in a dark forest with only little bits of light coming through, it's gonna be a histogram that's leaning towards the left because you've got a lot more dark values. Now you wanna make sure you don't bump into those shadows and lose that detail, but it's okay because your histogram's gonna go up and then be sort of low out like here like that. So there is no perfect histogram, it just depends on the scene you're photographing. So this is the scene we're looking at right now. Um, I thought I'd have a little more cloud cover today than I actually have. Um, so it's a little brighter than I thought, but this will make a good example of what we see. So looking at the scene, we've got some darkness down at the lower left part, down lower left corner uh, with the trees and then the sun's still getting blocked by the little valley creek bed we're in. And then up higher up, those trees are starting to catch full sun. And then of course the highlights in the water up there. So th that's the scene we're looking at. So we know we got some bright parts. We know we got some darker parts. So when we look at our histogram, that's what our eye knows. So we wanna use the histogram to sort of make that reflect. We got a fair amount of dark, a little bit of light. Um, so we'll use the histogram on the back of the camera to try to get this exposure right. Here we are at the back of the camera. We've got the settings on aperture and F16, ISO 100, and the shutter speed is currently 30. And as you can see from the histogram down there in the lower right, we have a lot of our tones and things to the left of the image, which means we're not getting a lot of our highlights or anything like that. We got a little bit of room to bump it over. So let's go ahead. I like my aperture at F16. I like ISO 100. Um, so I'm gonna play with the shutter speed to get the shot I want. I'm shooting on a tripod so I can go a little slower than being handheld. I'm gonna adjust the shutter speed and slow it down a little bit. Bring that histogram over. And here we are at 1 15th, and you start to see I'm bringing that histogram over to the right. I'm starting to expose to the right, get my highlights in. I'm gonna bump it over a little more. And you can see right there at the very far end, I've got a little bit of highlight starting to get right up against that edge of the screen. So I'm not gonna be able to bring this all the way over to the right like, like you might expect because I'm gonna start to blow the highlights. So I'm gonna bring a little more, boom. And right there, it's probably hard to see, there is a little bit, I'm starting to get some highlights that are all the way to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it this way. But as you can see, a lot of stuff over the left, but that's because I've got a lot of dark in my frame. So let's go ahead and take this shot. I got my focus right there on the water. And we're gonna click. I'm on self timer. Cool, so I'm a little dark in these shadows, I think, the histogram, but I'm not clipping anything per se, so that's pretty good. Now let me show you what starts happening. I'm gonna bring the histogram over to the right more by slowing my shutter speed even more. The scene gets brighter, but I've got a spot over here on the histogram that I am just maxing out. So I am all the way over, and I'm blowing the highlights out. We'll take a quick picture. 
see pretty bright i got my blinkies i'm losing sky losing detail so the histogram was a good representation right there on the edge i've got my highlights cranked up and that's going to be the sky we could see from the blinkies that it was the sky so we need to bring it back in to slow the shutter down a little bit i've got this super tall line over here so i'm in the highlights range i've got a little bit of a bump here um, but because this histogram is based on the jpeg i think i'm going to try it this way because i'm pretty sure i can bring those back in raw okay so that's pretty good okay and one more note about the histogram um, to be aware of is it is based on the jpeg in your camera which means it can be influenced by any kind of picture settings, picture profile settings. So if you're a person that has your camera set to show um, vivid or landscape, that's gonna make your image a little more contrasty, which will impact how the histogram reads on the back of your camera. The raw file that you'd be post-processing will have a lot more detail in it and it has some more flexibility. But what the camera is reporting the histogram is on the JPEG. So one of my recommendations is make sure you don't use a color profile that is too, contrasty you want it to be sort of flat if your camera has a neutral setting um, at most maybe go standard setting but being aware that even the standard setting can put a little more contrast in there which is gonna affect your histogram and where it reads so that's just probably one of the important things to keep in mind is you can when i expose the histogram i know my camera and i'm bumping up a little bit to those highlights but i know my raw file has some more data so even though i'm like right there at the edge as long as i'm not way far i can recover most of that with the raw file and post-processing um like i said to help balance that just make sure in your camera you're not doing it like a vivid picture profile or a landscape profile put it to a standard or a neutral that'll help your histogram be a little more accurate in the back of the camera but even then jpeg doesn't have quite as much information so you'll have a little bit of room to recover those shadows recover those highlights my recommendation is take your camera out play with it take some pictures watch that histogram and sort of make note of how far can you go to the right even though the camera might be saying you're bumped up against there and can you still recover so just keep that in mind so i hope you found that useful uh, on how to use the histogram uh, to me it's the foundation of how you're going to get a good exposure so when i do talk about uh, shutter speed aperture and iso in future videos you know what we're trying to target what we're doing this histogram video will give you a foundation to setting your exposure So if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button. And don't forget, if you want to see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, advice, uh, behind the scenes, uh, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. And thank you for watching.